welcome back to Biology in Your Backyard. I'm Dr. Mark Johnson. I'm May. And I'm Oscar. And today we're going to be talking about genetics and evolution for kids. So let's get into it. May and Oscar and families watching us at home. We're going to talk about genes and genetic differences between individuals. So let's first talk about what a gene actually is. Oscar, do you have some sense of what a gene is? No, actually, I don't think I do. Okay. May, what, what, what do you think of when you think of the term gene? Uh, something that controls the way we look. Yeah, that's part of it. A gene is the information that's passed on from one generation to the next. And that information is encoded in, in something, a big word called deoxyribonucleic acid. I know, that's a huge word. Who wants to say that? And so we shorten that to the letters D N A. And so genes are encoded by DNA. And every generation from parents to children, to their children, to their children, we pass on our genes. Different individuals, even of the same species, can have different copies of the same gene that make them look different, make them maybe behave differently. And we call these different copies alleles. And whenever you see differences among individuals that are genetically controlled in the same species, we refer to that as genetic variations. And you know what's so cool? You can actually see genetic variation out in nature. For example, look at those squirrels right over there. We've talked about these in a previous episode. This is the gray squirrel. But contrary to its name, it has two morphs. It has a gray morph, but it also has a black morph. And that difference between whether it's gray or black is controlled by a gene that produces pigments. That's a fancy word for the color cells in their hair and their skin. They're still the same species. They just have different alleles that influence whether they're gray or whether they're black. Let's go on a hunt to see what genetic variation we can see around our property just by looking at different organisms that are growing. How's that sound? Sounds good. Let's All right, go. let's go. Hey, look, there's some sparrows over there. Oh, there it is. That's a white-throated sparrow. Notice how it has a distinctly white and black striped head and white throat. Look at this other white-throated sparrow that just came in front. This one's called the tan morph because it, the stripes on its head and its throat are more brown colored. These differences are caused by genetic variation within this species that occur in both the male and females of white-throated sparrows. There it goes. Hey, let's go look at some plants over there. Do you know what this plant is right here? I think it's goldenrod. You're exactly right. It's called tall goldenrod. But do you notice anything that's different about, let's say, this one here, which is a tall goldenrod, and this one here, which is also a tall goldenrod, in terms of how they're growing? Well, one, they... This one looks a little bit furrier. And two, this one also seems to be bending over a little bit more than this guy. Yeah. What what shape does that look like to you? What does it make you think of? The letter R. Yeah, it looks like the letter R. And people have actually called this the candy cane stem. Isn't that cool? Yeah. This difference of whether they, they produce a straight stem or a candy cane stem is controlled by a genetic difference you're actually seeing with your eyes, a genetic difference between this plant and this plant. That is so cool. Yeah, you know what's even cooler? By these plants are often attacked by a fly called a ball gall fly. They make a big round, you remember those big round galls on the, the goldenrods? Well, these ones that grow straight up 
are attacked much more than the ones that bend over. The flies don't like to lay their eggs in this one. So it's thought that this genetic difference is really important in influencing whether or not they're attacked by the ball golf fly. Hmm, huh. that's cool. Yeah, pretty cool, eh? So May, this is Dame's Rocket that you see in front of you. It's a type of mustard. And this is, all of these individuals are the same species. But what do you notice about how they vary from one another, how they differ from one another? Take a look. Well, I've noticed that some of the flowers are very, like, quite a deeper purple, while others are white, and then some are just kind of in between. What do you think is going on here? Well, I think because of genetic variation, there's these, that it causes these flowers to have different colors, even though they're very, very same species. I think you're exactly right. So May, how many different colors do you see here? Well, I see three different colors. We have this color, which is the darker purple. Then we have this color, which is the intermediate. It's kind of like a lighter, a pale purple. And then we have this one, which is like the white. Scientists haven't yet studied what causes this variation in flower color, but it's almost certainly caused by genetic differences genetic variation between these plants that influence whether they're purple, white, or that lavender color. And this variation is probably caused by just a few genes that differ. Here's yellow trout lily, which we talked about in the spring, and it also shows genetic variation. In this case, specifically in the color of the anthers, where the pollen's kept. See this individual has yellow anthers, right there in the center of the flower. Well, compare that to this flower, which has red anthers. This is also probably caused by genetic differences between these plants. Ooh, look at these snails. Nice find, May. This is the brown lip snail. And notice how this individual has five brown stripes on each spiral of its shell. But now look at this other big individual on the left. It only has a single stripe. Scientists have studied the brown lip snail and found that they have lots of genetic variation for the number of stripes they have. Some have five, some have three, some have one, some have no stripes. All of this is due to genetic differences between those snails. And this genetic variation is thought to influence how these snails heat their body. Whoa, look at these beautiful purple violets. So pretty. Nice find, Oscar. This is called the common blue violet. Oh, and look over there. I see one that looks just like it, but it's white. That means it's a white violet. Actually, Oscar, this is the exact same species of violet, but it's had a mutation. So it loses that purple color. So it just produces white flowers now. Mutations are how new gene copies, or what we call alleles, arise. One of the most common mutations to create genetic differences in organisms is a mutation for a loss of color, in this case resulting in a white flower. But this doesn't just occur in plants. This can occur in any type of organism. Remember the robins that we looked at in an earlier episode? Well, typically they have a brown back and this orange belly. Now, look at this robin that I found in the park a few weeks ago. Notice how it's almost completely pure white. It's had a mutation that results in it losing most of its color, and so it shows genetic differences from other robins that show their more typical colors. So Dad, I get the genetics part, but why are we talking about this? Yeah, so the reason we're talking about genetic variation is because this is like the secret sauce of evolution. You can't get evolution if there isn't genetic variation within a species. But how does that work? Right, so if you have, let's say, genetic differences between individuals in a population, well, if one of those alleles that influences a trait, such as purple flowers versus white flowers, which we looked at, let's say next year, all of a sudden, the genes, the alleles that produce the purple flowers are more common. 
and the ones that produce the, the white allele is less common, that's evolution. It's simply a change in how common one allele is versus the other. And then the next year, maybe the difference will be even bigger, or maybe it'll be a little bit less. Evolution is simply a change in those genes from one generation to the next. That's all evolution is. It's not a magical thing. Let's give a specific example of how that might happen. Consider our flowers that genetically vary in their color. Now let's assume there's a bee that likes to pollinate these flowers. This bee really likes purple flowers, and so it only visits those flowers. And so the purple plants will get pollinated more, and they'll produce more seeds. Whereas the lavender and white flowered plants won't produce many seeds at all. So what do you think the population will look like next year? Well, of course, there'll be more plants that grow up that have purple flowers. And if that bee is still around next year and it still prefers those purple flowers, well, they'll produce more seeds again and you'll get even more purple flowers the next year. And if this keeps going on and on from generation to generation, eventually we'll only see purple flowers in this population. This process of evolution that I've just been describing to you is what scientists call evolution by natural selection. And this was an idea and process first described almost 150 years ago by Charles Darwin. And it turns out that this is really common in nature. Many species evolve due to natural selection and that is how they adapt to their environments. And now for the nature fact of the day. Originally, evolution was thought to be a really slow process that happens over thousands to millions of years. And it does happen over that period of time. But relatively recently, we've discovered that evolution can be, in fact, super fast. In fact, in an organism like bacteria, they can evolve in a matter of hours or a matter of days. Some plants and animals can evolve and even adapt to new environments in as little as two generations. So evolution can happen very quickly. And that's the nature fact of the day. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Biology in Your Backyard. Subscribe to Biology in Your Backyard for more content like this. And make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. See, See you next time. Bye-bye.